All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me, it's Stevie Stroh, and I am joined for the first time on this particular series, but not for the first time on YouTube, but in the first time on my programming and basic series, I am joined by the man upstairs, Curtis Boyle. How are you, Curtis? Not too bad. This is going to be going back to the old days for me, programming in disk extended color basic. Oh, yeah. Curtis is somewhat of a programmer, I guess we could say. He is a person who has programmed a thing or two in his time, and he programmed, you program for a living, don't you, Curtis? Kind of, yeah. I, I mean, I run my own company, and programming is part of that. I also have to do accounting and a bunch of other crud I really don't like doing that much. Right, right, right. Well, here's what we're doing in this video here. This is not another chapter. This is taking that game that I started in the last video, our first off-book impromptu game, and kind of tweaking it and actually turning it into two games because a couple of things happened. I realized there was a flaw in my logic on when we should be randomizing things because, and you have to forgive me, I never actually played the real game Russian Roulette, so I am sorry. Um, I made well, if it. you did, you won quite, quite well. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I uh, I was trying to follow some logic. I, I looked at the original game and I thought there was a flaw in the logic, but there really isn't. Because in the real game of Russian Roulette, what you do is you kind of hand the gun around to a bunch of people and you all take turns. And each time you spin the barrel and then you put it and you pull the trigger and you hope you don't blow your head off. So that's kind of how the game goes. What I did in my crazy head was I had the computer generate the number one time and then give you a few tries to guess it. So really what I made without realizing it was a basically a guess what I'm thinking game. So what I thought we would do first is let's just fix Russian Roulette. Let's change the name. Let's call it Guess What I'm Thinking. And then we'll. I'm just going to change the two um, branches where it goes to if you win or lose. I'm just going to reverse those because what happens now, instead of if you guess it right, you don't die. I'm just going to have that go to the you win thing. And if you guess it wrong, instead of it saying you're dead, I'm just going to say, no, sorry, you didn't guess it. You're a loser, right? So that's kind of what we're going to do first. So I think that's the easy thing to do first, right? So let yep. me switch over. And let me show you what I did, right? So basically, I did everything in Excel. And I'm just doing this for me. This helps my thought process. I don't expect anybody else to do this. I did this series, um, number one, mostly just for myself because I'm retraining my brain and I'm relearning and re-remembering the process. But I also figured if somebody was going to do this, I picked a couple of programs that anybody could download and use and you don't have to have any technical you know, very little minimal technical experience. Not that most people who don't do this would probably be technically oriented or technically interested people anyways, but I tried to make this program and this series as user-friendly as possible for whatever reason. So I've strayed a little bit by switching over to using Microsoft Excel. You don't have to do this. This is a way for me to visualize my thought process and then translate this back into what we're going to type in on our virtual color computer and I also just changed the font now in Excel to look like the Cocoa this is a, a font called um, color basic so it just kind of looks cool too so here's our program and the program right now is only 41 lines right so it starts off by clearing the screen it says Russian roulette 1.0 uh, licensed to Tandy Corporation. This was my whole Spectral Associates faux screen. It kind of looked like all the old Spectral games. Uh, it asks you for your name. It clears the screen. It says there is one bullet. There's six chambers. This is where, this first one here it picks a random number to make a noise like it's spinning the chamber, drrr, spinning the barrel, right? And then um, it so depending on how many times you do that, up to nine random times, it'll print a couple dots, make a couple sounds like it's spinning. And then it makes a single sound like I'm done, uh, or that's that's the sound it makes while it's spinning. And then um, now it picks a random bullet, which it only picks once, and then it gives you five tries. Here's the flaw in my logic right here. Line 150 for picking a random bullet. This needs to be re-randomized inside this for next loop here. Not outside the loop, but inside the loop. So in order for this to be a proper Russian roulette game, it needs to move here. But the easier win right now is to um, make this a guess what I'm thinking game. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to save this as a different name. Uh, I'm doing this again in Excel, but I'm going to call this GWIT10. Guess what I'm thinking 1.0 is going to be the current name. So what I'm doing now, again, I'm kind of thinking out loud. I will actually type this back in when we get to the virtual color computer, but this is just me doing my thought process. So instead of it saying Russian Roulette, 
I'm going to make it say, guess what number I'm thinking. And then here it's going to say copyright. Um, and instead of saying that, it's going to say uh, copyright 2016 Steve Strobridge. That's my name. Don't wear it out. License to Canyon Corporation. What is your name? Um, there is one bullet. Um, so I'm going to change this one to say I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. Of a number, N U M B E R, between 1 and 10. You have three guesses. How many guesses should we get on a low number like that? Three guesses? Sure. You have three guesses to. You have three guesses. You have three tries to guess it. There we go. Fine. Uh, clear the screen. Okay. This one here, instead of saying spinning barrel, how about we say. Uh, I'm thinking of a number. Something. Okay. Thinking. Uh, and so we're going to print a dot. And instead of it saying sound 24.1, the sense is now thinking, we're going to make a computer sound. So we're going to say sound RND parentheses 255, 1. So you're going to hear that. Right. So it's going to sound like a computer thinking. So I am thinking it's going to print up to nine dots and make random sounds. I have one question for you. Yeah. Is this going to be a completely random where you get no hints, or are you actually going to have the computer tell you, nope, it's higher, or nope, it's lower? Uh, for this for this argument, good question, good thought, but this is just going to be completely random. So, okay. B equals yes. random 10. Okay, first, okay. Now, instead of for, for T equals 1 to 5, it's going to be for try equals 1 to 3. Try number 3, instead of saying what chamber, um, uh, what, what number, right? What number? Input A. Um, and then this case here, instead of it saying less than one or whatever, it's going to synopsis is between one and 10, right? So if A is less than one or greater than, than 10, then go to 170. Now this one here, if A equals B, meaning I pick the number, um, then go to 250. 250 is you, is, um, bang, right? 250 is the one that says you're dead. Um, so instead of doing that, if you guess the number right, we want it to go down to the one that says you win, which is 350. So this needs to be changed. If A equals B, go to 350. That's the one that's going to go to the U1 sound. Um, and then this one here, instead, if you, if you don't win, um, this one is going to go to, um, that then goes to 260. Yeah. So we need to, to modify. You change first the clicky dodge the bullet. Yeah. Basically, we're saying you, like, okay. you had the wrong answer. Click, you dodged a bullet, right? So instead of saying click, you dodged a bullet, nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. End string. Okay. All right, so the one that says bang now, and so instead of saying CLS4, I want to change the CLS. Uh, what's, what's yellow? Two. CLS2. Okay. So we'll change it to CLS2 for a nice bright yellow. Instead of saying bang, we're going to make it say uh, congrats. Uh, uh, hooray. How about how do you spell hooray? H-O-O-R-A-Y. Hooray. Actually, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that at this point, though, because this is the fall through this, part this of the is, code after you've guessed all the times, but you didn't get it right. No, no, this is this is, no, this is if you get it right. Uh, oh, no, no, this is when you got it wrong. Oops, you got it wrong. Sorry. Okay. Uh, you blow it. So okay, you're right. So didn't guess my number. Didn't. How about we say this? Didn't guess. And then at the end here, semicolon. We're gonna actually put the number, which was B for bullet, right? So in this case here, we're gonna print the answer. So we're gonna tell you what it is at the end. You blow it. You didn't guess this. Okay. Now, you survived. You got it. So, you won or something like that. Yeah. A name string guessed my number. Okay. So, there's the changes. What the heck did I just do? I don't remember because I was thinking out loud while I did it. So, let's review this once again. 
What do we do? We start off by clearing the screen with a random color. Then we print our little intro screen. Guess what number I'm thinking by Steve Strobridge. Obviously, you would put your name here. License to Tandy Corporation, which is a complete farce. What is your name? Input N strings for name. And then clear the random screen again to a random color. And it's going to say, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. You have three tries to guess it. Then it will clear the screen Oh, C. Then now C is what it's going to do to think. Print thinking for T equals 1 to C. Print dot, 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 dot. CLS ran a sound. Make a random sound. Do, 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 while it's thinking and while it's printing dots on the screen. And then it picks the random number here. So now B, which used to be a bullet, is now a random number between 1 and 10. And here's where we start the game. For T equals 1 to 3. These are our three tries. Print. This print here is to skip a line because I had semicolons after the bullet here. And it kind of run, was a run-on sentence. What I could actually do here is I could put that, instead of being at 165, I could do it 155 even. Um, but yeah, unless you want to double space to make it easy yeah. to read, it's up to you. Okay. All right. So now it's going to say, all right. So now it's going to, here's for, for T equals one to three. Here's our three tries. It's going to print, skip a line. It's going to say, this is try number one. What number? It's going to input A for answer. If your answer is less than one or greater than 10, it's going to go back and ask you to try again. And then if your answer equals B, which was the random bullet, which is now our number, it's going to go to 350. 350 is the part where it says your name string guessed my number. Yes. Okay. So if you get it right, go to 350, which is the happy ending. Um, if you don't get it right, it's going to say, nope, that's not it. Name string, which is whatever your string is. And then it's going to make a sound. Boop. And then we should probably make that a lower sound now, too. Let's make, let's make yeah. this a sound 16, lower frequency sound. We'll make it a little bit longer, 16 comma 2, and we'll do that three times. At the end of that, it's going to go to 260. Uh, what is 250 here? 250 was the one. What the hell is 250? I don't know. 250 is where we need to go if you get it right. So it's not 350. Wait a second. 250 is the death sound. Go to, so 240 instead of going to 260. Next T. This is kind of, because I've moved things around, this line here becomes pointless. Yeah. So we can actually get rid of 240. Okay, we're gonna get rid of 240. All right. So then we're gonna optimize your code. We have to optimize your code. Yes. So we're gonna get rid of 240, and it's gonna make a. In this case here, sorry, you blew it. You didn't guess B, which was the number. Uh, guess my number again. Play again. Um, all right. I think that's gonna do it. How does well? How does that all work now? Well, now I have to go back to the actual computer. And then we have to actually fix this in the program. So the first thing I'm going to do here now, let me get back to my actual VCC. So in my VCC here, I have to do a dir. Uh, this was saved on the floppy disk. And in my dir, I am going to load RR10. That was uh, Russian Roulette 1.0. And then I'm going to save this right away save and there's no save as but i'm going to save this as guess what i'm thinking gwit gwit 10 gwit 1.0 so i've now saved that as a new name so i now have a new version of the software now i have to go back and figure out what lines i needed to change first one was line 20. right so if i list 20 right now 20 says russian roulette so 20 now needs to say print quote guess what i'm thinking 1.0 um, good enough the next thing we're going to change is this what is your name line 80 if I list 80 80 is the one that says there's one bullet there's six chambers so now I'm going to say okay 80 print I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10 you have three tries to guess it Okay, that one we need to change. Line 100 right now says spinning barrel. So line 100 now needs to say print quote um, thinking semicolon. Okay, the next thing we will change is this. Line 130, instead of saying sound 24, I'm going to say sound random 255 comma 1. 
Um, we're going to print the dots. Okay, next C, B equals random 10. So line 150, where B equals, before we only had six bullets. Now we're going to say B equals RND 10. That's our guessing a number between 1 and 10. We have fixed that. Line 160 right now that says for T equals 1 to try, we 1 to 5. We used to have five tries, now we'll have three tries. So 160 will say 4T equals 1, 2, 3. We've just fixed that. Uh, 170. Right now it says what chamber? So 170 now, then you say print quote try number semicolon T colon uh, what number colon semicolon. Okay, line 190 is the next one we need to change. So 190 will say if A is less than one or A is greater Oop, than 10. What's your, what's your problem? If A is less than one, thank you, or A is greater than 10, then 170. Okay, we're going to go back. Okay, line 210 needs to be changed. Line 210, instead of saying, click, you dodged a bullet, we're going to now say line 210, we're going to say in uh, print quote, uh, nope, that's not it. Semicolon end strength, nope, that's not it. Curtis, all right, you didn't get it right. Um, on line 220, I decided to make the sound a little bit lower for a wrong guess. So line 220 is now going to say sound 16 comma 2, lower frequency, slightly longer. Next T, line 240, we don't need anymore. So let's list that out. Let's, let's list out 230 through 260. Let me see if I'm missing anything here in my code. So line 230 says next T. Line 240 says go to 330, which we don't need anymore. Line 250 says sound 10 comma 4 CLS 2. All right, so line 240 we can get rid of. So in order to get rid of it, we just type in 240. It's gone. Uh, line 250, instead of saying to sound 10 comma 4, that's fine. But line 260, instead of saying CLS 4, which was our blood red, now for 260, we're going to say CLS 2, which is our happy banana yellow. Okay, so... Now we fix that. The next thing I need to print is on line 280. The one that used to say bang. 280 is now going to say print at RND um, 508. But um, what am I printing? Sorry, S O R R Y. That's 5 minus 11 is 6. So we have to make that up to 506. Actually, let's make it 505 so we don't hit that last space and make the screen scroll. Print at random 505, comma, quote. And let's let's do this in lowercase, too. S, uh, what is it, shift zero? Yep. Which is not working for me right now. Oh, in the emulator, yeah, you might have to just use caps lock or something. Okay, sorry, lowercase. So caps lock. Okay, sorry, lowercase. Uh, semicolon, right? That was line 280. Okay, so that'll print up dark. Okay, that was 280. Uh, line three, this is line two, line 300. Uh, that should be okay. Line 300 says you blew it, and we can leave that. Line 310. Line 310 says somebody bit the dust. And this one is going to say 310 now. Print quote, uh, print name string. And it's at print at 260. Okay, print at 260, comma, name string end string comma quote space didn't guess semi quote end quotes semicolon b which is our variable for the random bullet so curtis didn't guess four or whatever the number was and i actually held up five fingers just in case you're paying attention all right so that was line 310 i've fixed that line 320 says go to 360 360 is the would you like to play again all right so we have that, we have that. What else? Okay, line 350, we need to change it. Let's list 340. Sound 200, comma 4. List 350. So print name string survives. So 350, we're going to say now print end string, semicolon, put guessed my number. La, 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 la. Okay, I think that's it. I think those are all the changes. I believe they're the changes, but we'll find out here soon enough. So now I'm going to do this again. If I do a dir, I want to save this one more time. So I'm going to save this as, guess what, I'm thinking 1.0. And let's take it for a test drive. Curtis, what do you think is going to happen here? 
Have I completely screwed the pooch, or what do you think? I think you're pretty close. I, some of the positioning you might have to change because some of the lines of text, ones with print outs in particular, yeah, okay. change the length of the string, so they probably won't be centered properly or stuff. We'll okay. see. It. We'll find out right now. So we're going to run this. Guess what I'm thinking 1.0. Copyright 2016 by Steve Strobridge. License to Tandy Corp. What is your name? Well, we're going to do Curtis on this one. My sure name blame is me. Curtis. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. You have three tries to guess it. Thinking. Try number one. What number, Curtis? Seven. Seven. Lucky number seven. That's not it, Curtis. Try number two. What number? Three. Three. That's not it, Curtis. Try number three. What number? Ten. Ten. That's not it, Curtis. Sorry, you blew it. Curtis didn't guess four. Play again? Yes or no? I think uh, it's your turn. So put. When it, I can't remember uh, when you hit yes. Does it go back and ask for your name again, or do you? Do yeah, you... it starts. It starts all the way over. Goes back to okay, line ten. Okay, we'll let you have the second. All game. right, so let's try this one. What is your name? Ooh, I like that one. I don't think you're number between one and ten. You have three tries to guess it. Uh, thinking what number? I'm gonna do two. Sorry. You blew it. Steve didn't guess two. Oh, that's wrong. Wait, yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> you actually didn't Okay, get it. play again. Sorry, you blew it. No. Okay. So I have to look at my code. Let me go back to looking at the code here. And where did I type this wrong? So if... Hold on now. Let's look at the code. i got to find this now. I'm thinking... You know, where you actually match B, the number, what happened? Yeah. If A equals B, then go to 350. Maybe that's wrong. The 350 says print end string. Maybe I forgot to change that line in the code. I bet you I did. I yeah. have it changed in my spreadsheet. So that's right the, in the spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah, in the spreadsheet it's right. So what number was that? If A equals B, then go to 350. That's line 200. I got to go back and switch line 200. See, this is what debugging is all about, right? Yeah. Fun, isn't it, kids? Yes, it is. Fun with debugging. Okay. So if I list. What line was that? If A equals B, then go to whatever. That's line 200. List 200. Okay, so 200. If A equals B, then 200 now needs to go to 350. Not 250, but 350. Okay. Now, let's save this as... You know, you know one thing I learned in the old days when working on computers is save and save often because you never know when you're going to get a power failure or something else. So save... Gwit and we, and we should also mention you you just change the syntax of the if then where you have it just going to the line number without the word go to either is yeah. acceptable in basic right and another thing too is um instead of writing out the word print you could abbreviate that with a question mark i use that shortcut all yeah. the time okay guess what i'm thinking 1.0 copyright 2016 steve strawbridge licensed to tandy corp what is your name my name is steve I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. You have three tries to guess it. What is the number? 2? That's not it, Steve. 4? That's not it, Steve. 6? That's oh, not good. it, Steve. I feel better now. Sorry. Lost this time. You blew it, Steve. Didn't guess 8. Play again? Sure, why not? Okay, what is your name? Let's let's uh, do Nick Morentes. Good day. <laughs> I'll what? take a three, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a three. I have a horrible I'll, Australian accent. All right, I'll take a bloody three. All right, here we go. And while we're at it, I'll have a wallaby with that. Okay, that's not it, Nick. Put a five, mate. All right, a five <laughs> while I'm putting a shrimp on the barbie. That's not it either, Nick. Well, I'm going to go kick the crap out of a kangaroo, so let's try a nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it, Nick. Sorry, you blew it. Nick didn't get it. A lot of prize for you. <laughs> All right, so we just took my flawed um, Russian roulette, which was really a guess what I'm thinking a game, and we made it a guess what I'm thinking game. Now, if I wanted to be really nitpicky, you blew it should probably come over, what do you say, four or five more characters to be centered, and then play again oh, should maybe go down one or two lines. So let's be real anal retentive and let's work on that. So uh, why not? This is what coding is all about. It's about achieving perfection in any way, shape, or form possible, right? So if I go back to my Excel spreadsheet, one of the other tabs I made was this little thing here where I have my print at locations, right? So I need to go, well, before I even do that, let's go back to all Coco. All right, so no, I don't want to play again. 
Uh, well, I have to click on the thing where it's actually going to read my keyboard input. Okay, let's click on this thing here. No, let's do a list and then uh, play again. Print at 288. That needs to go down and then right here, print so and so. Guess my number. You blew it. Print at 229. Okay, so here this needs to move over. So line 300 needs to move over about four or five. Uh, or print and string guessed my number play again. So how about 360 at line 288? We move that down a couple. Yeah. So where, the where ones that you actually print the person's name with end string, those I don't know if you can really adjust too much because depending on the size of the person's name, it's gonna. It's I'm gonna, gonna move that down to line 384. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move that down closer to the end. So, um, so the one that says play again, I'm just gonna say print at 384. So. Um, I'm going to try the edit command. Edit 360. Brave, are we? Print at 384. Is it I for insert? Uh, do you want to insert or change? Change. How many characters do you want to change? Three. You want to hit three, then C. Three C. Change three characters. So it's 384. And then how do you get to the end, or you just hit enter? Enter. Okay, so what I just showed you is what we're actually going to cover in chapter nine, which is how to use the edit command, which has got limited editing capabilities. But I just edited line 360 in basic. This was actually a feature of extended color basic. My first Coco did not have this. So if I needed to change a line number, I had to retype the whole thing and hope I didn't screw anything up in how I typed it. Um, so I just edited that and I changed it from 288 to 384. What does that mean? Let me go back here and show you. All right, so every location on the screen has a number. I said I was going to print right here on, on 288, which is 10 lines down. I've now moved it to 384, which is 13 lines down out of the 16 lines on the screen. So it's basically four from the bottom. I just moved that down for aesthetic reasons. You know, just a little bit of OCD, want my screen to look prettier. The next thing I want to do is the one that prints like you blew it. And where was that at? What line number was that? Oops, wrong thing here. The one that says you blew it or whatever it was, I printed something else and I just I just determined that that needs to go a little bit different. So that one here, 229. All right. And this one here is a is is an approximation because we don't know how long somebody's name's going to be. Yeah. Probably so, just print but that this, one at the beginning of a line just Yeah. So um but uh so the one that's at 229, that can probably go over a few, right? Um, so we'll just add, let's just say five to that. So that's going to be what, 234? So line 300 is going to be it's, it's switched to 234. So if I go back to my all cocoa, and this is real nitpicky stuff here. This is super duper nitpicky. What line did I say that was? 300? Okay. Yep. Edit 300. And I'm going to hit change. 3C for three change, three character change. 3C? Yep. And I'm going to do. 234 enter all right now when i Once run you got the, used to it the edit command actually is not too bad but it's right. not as easy to you know, grasp in your head as okay. a full off screen editor is what is your name i'm gonna make this one curtis again curtis i'm thinking of a number between one and ten you have three tribes thinking four. what number four that's not it curtis eight eight that's not it curtis seven Seven. That's not it, Curtis. Sorry, you blew it. Yeah, the you blew it looks a little bit more centered. Yep. And Curtis didn't guess two. I should put a semicolon after the number two here so it doesn't, you know, destroy the rest of the screen, right? Play again is now lower. I like that. But let's fix that. So Curtis didn't guess two. That needs to be edited. Uh, so that is line 310. How do I get to the end? X. X gets you to the end, and I just put a semicolon there. X is Boom. short for extend, which basically means extend. it goes right to the end and puts okay. you right in insert mode. So, just type so I'm going to save this again. Gwit 10. Let's try this one more time, and then we're done with this. Run. All right, Steve. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. I'm going to do 1. That's not it. I'll do 10. No, and I'll do right in the middle. 5. That's not it, Steve. Sorry, you blew it. Steve didn't guess 8. Okay, and so now what we see here is that it's not destroying the rest of the screen. All right, not bad. Fun little exercise here. So it took my random madness, and, then, and when I say madness, it's nowhere uh, Simon Jonasson level of madness, but this is 
my when version of your hair is hair's much more. Human. <laughs> yes. yeah. This is my version of madness in extended color basic, or actually mostly color basic at this point. So, okay, so that was fun. We just turned Russian roulette into guess what I'm thinking. Now that we've done that, let's go back to the violent world of Russian roulette and let's make it a proper <laughs> Russian roulette where um, you have you can still blow your brains out, but you have a fighting chance. So, now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna load again. Um, Russian Roulette 10, so I'm going to load RR10. And I need to switch to my code and figure out how we're going to change my code. So, um, uh, where do I go to recent RR10? Okay, so let's switch back to my old code. And here's the code for Russian Roulette 10. First thing we'll do here is this is going to become Russian Roulette 1.1 because we have a, you know, we've got a, we've, we've modified the code. This is an update. Ooh, update. This is an update. Okay. Um, there's one bullet, six change of a spinning barrel. So here's where we're going to make the change, though. Right now, the random number is picked before the four next loop that gives you um, these tries. I could actually just flip-flop these two line numbers, couldn't I? Yep, pretty much. So how about I do that right now? Yeah, you want it in the loop so that it, you randomly spin your chamber again from scratch. Okay, so right now I have flip-flopped them, but what I actually have to do now is also renumber them. Okay, so so this is 150, this is one so 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 that's basically the change there. Although the other change is is that we also want so I'm going to highlight these two lines that I've changed too. So when I go back and I and I look at things, it'll make it a little bit easier for me. So how the hell do I do that? Uh, right there. So these are the two lines that I've changed. The other line that I wanted to change was um, down here. You blew it. This became like I added five to that, right? So that'll become like 234. Let me fix that. And this is a real small change here. So this becomes 234. You blew it. You're, you bit the dust. And then the last one at 288, we changed that to 384, right? Where we just move this down a few more lines. So that got moved to print at location 384, which becomes four lines from the top. So if just a couple of tweaks now, we can take Russian Roulette 1.0 and make it more accurate. All right. So let me go ahead and save this as now. I'm going to save my spreadsheets to match my uh, programming file names. I'm going to save this as Russian Roulette 1.1. What does all this mean? What is my um, mini madness doing here? Well, let's go back and let's make these changes. So if I right now list. I have one question um, before you do your changes. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if in the basic menu, have you covered the REM statement yet? I have not because I haven't found it yet in the book. So I have not done, gotten any, to any commenting or remarking yet. Okay. Because usually when, you, when you're doing revisions and updates to programs, you sometimes want to put a remark saying what has changed. Right. Now, if another bug shows up, a new one, then you kind of know where to check. Right, 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 right. I right. haven't haven't come across it in the book yet, so I, I suppose we'll, we'll I leave could, it for now. But yeah, I just wanted okay. to mention that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip these two line numbers, right? So I'm now gonna basically say 150 um, for t equals. And I'm just set to short line. I'm just gonna retype them, and then 160 b for bullet equals r and d six. Okay. That's our major change. This puts the randomization inside the loop. So every time you take a turn, it's spinning the barrel again, all right? Yeah. So actually, if I wanted to be real nitpicky, the spinning the barrel part needs to be moved inside the loop too. True. You are being nitpicky. Um, I mean, yeah, true about the loop. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, well. Well, you, so, could, you could use line numbers in between to do that too. Like you could put, uh, okay. Like so if you're reusing the same variable, so that would make it a bit more complicated. Because you're using four T on you both, you're spinning the barrel and you're reusing four T for the actual. Yeah. Term. So there's okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to get rid of these line numbers here. I'm going to get rid of that. Don't need it. I'm going to get rid of this. Don't need it. I'm going to get rid of this. Don't need that. Get rid of that. Don't need that. Get rid of that. I mean, technically, I need it all somewhere else. 
So here is where we would need it. So how about I'm going to do this. I'm going to be real lazy and cheap, not make any sounds. I'm going to do a, I'm going to put a colon to separate these things, which we haven't covered yet either. And I'm just going to say print quote spinning barrel dot dot dot. And the colon so, allows you to separate multiple yeah. commands or statements on the same line. Yeah. I mean, technically this colon can be right next to it. I spaced it off for visual purposes. But what I'm doing right now is because I'm just being lazy is that um, I'm going to get rid of, um, and this is what uh, Lee Patterson referred to as optimizing code in our interview by shortening it. So I'm going to get rid of one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code. I've flip-flopped two lines of code here, and I've actually put two statements on one line number. I have two different commands going on. The first command is going to say pick a random bullet between one and six. Colon says end of this statement, get ready for our next statement. And now I'm going to say spinning barrel. Um, actually here I don't have to in this I don't have to do this print so here I could do a, a, a random sound I could go back and fix that random sound yep. right where the spinning sound so here I could say uh, on 165 I could say for um, for SP for spin equals one two six sound SP comma one so it's going to be little, 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 like a little you need a colon after the six, not a comma. Though. One to six, colon, sorry. No problem. Um, I'm your friendly debugger. Sound SP, comma, one, next, SP. All in one line. Real tight, compact code. So these are the things we are going to change. Okay, these are changes. These are deletions. So we'll make those red. Uh, you're going away. We're going to get rid of those lines of code there. We're going to change these lines of code here. I'm changing a few more lines of code. So this is what I'm changing here. Okay, so I am getting a little bit more compact here. But let's look through this again and let's explain the madness. I love saying madness now, even though I'm nowhere near as mad as Simon Jonasson is. But we now just said Russian Roulette 1.1. 1 .1. Um, actually, I now need to say... Um, uh, I need to put in a new line number here. I should put uh, assisted by Curtis Boyle. <laughs> I need to give you co-author credit here. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, license to Tandy Corporation. What is your name? Okay. Keep there's my name six, out of it. <laughs> there's, there's one bullet and six chambers. Here's our, here's our five tries. We're going to get rid of one, two, three, four, five lines of code. We're going to get rid of five lines from the program. This is the main game loop right now for T equals one to five. Those are our five tries. We're going to pick a random bullet. We're going to print the word spinning barrel. We're then going to make a sound. Right? We're going to make six sounds. Okay. Then we're going to say this is try number one. What chamber? We're going to input your answer. If your answer is less than one or greater than six, meaning an invalid response, it's going to go back and ask you the same question again. If your answer equals the bullet, then we're going to go to line 250, which is the death sequence. It starts off by clearing the screen in blood red and then puts the word bang on the screen a few different times. Um, if it does not equal B, then it's going to go to the next line. It's going to say click. You dodged a bullet. It's going to make a sound. It's going to say next T. And at this point, if you dodge the bullet five times, it's going to jump down to 330, which is the high frequency sound that says you have survived. Technically, it should be going to 320 that clears the screen. That should change to go to 320. That's so a, this should say orphaned go, line there. This should say go to 320. So 320 clears the screen. So I need to fix that line. So I will highlight that. This is the anal retentive nitpickiness that can happen when you start writing software. And if you have Nick, any Nick type and you of, would get along great because he's yeah. pretty nitpicky with his stuff yeah. too. So if you have any level of OCD and if you have any level of perfectionism, um, you can drive yourself insane. All right, so I'm going to save this again in Excel, and now I'm going to switch back to my Cocoa. We're going to make the changes. So these are subtle changes to Russian Roulette. First thing we're doing is we're getting rid of all this crap here. Second thing we're doing is we're putting the randomization of the barrel inside the loop. So each time you try it, you're spinning the barrel again, and you're still going to get five tries. But it's going to randomize that number each time. It's going to tell you what try you're on. Did you get it right? Um, and it's going to give you let give you a chance to get your answer. If you answered the number that is the bullet, it's going to go to line one. It's going to go to line. Oh, that's if it's not valid. If you answered it correctly, 
it's going to go to line 250, which is the death sequence. 250 is death. If you didn't answer quickly, it's going to say, click, you dodged a bullet. Uh, it's going to make a sound. It's going to continue. At this point, it's going to jump down because if you haven't died, this is the logic here. If you guess the number that's a bullet, jump to line 250, which is the death sequence. If, you, if that condition is not met and all five of your four next loops are done, the next choice here, the next line is going to say, well, skip the death and go to the happy ending. So we're jumping down to line two. We're jumping down to line 320, which is the one right here that clears the screen and says you have survived. And then this is the little death sequence here. So these are the changes to the program. I'm confused myself, and I kind of sort of know what I'm doing. So I'm not sure if anybody who's never programmed before knows what the heck I'm talking about here. But let's go back and let's just delete the old lines. So can I type in, can I type in, um, I don't know what There's two ways you can do it. You can type in each individual line number one at a time to delete, which is the old color basic way. Uh huh. Or you can do del space del for delete. first line number dash last line number. Okay, so I'm going to delete lines 90 through 140. So del space 90 through 140, gone. Okay, line 150. Line 150 should still say that. Line 160, this one needs to be changed. So line 160 is going to say B equals random. 6. Now I'm going to add a colon, new statement, print quote, spinning barrel, dot, 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 end quote. Okay. Line 165 now, which used to say print, which is just skipping a line. Now um, 165 is going to say for spin, for spin equals 1, 2, 6, colon, new statement, Sound spin comma one short sound colon next spin done that line does not need to change the next on line that needs to change is line 230 if I list 230 230 says next T that's now 220 220 says next T what happened to my line numbers I don't know and this spreadsheet didn't quite match the original? Uh, so I need to list that out now. List 200 through 240. Okay. The 230 says next to you. 240 says go to 330. That should, 240 says go to, that needs to change to 320. So 240 needs to say go to 320. That's the line that actually clears the screen. That's been fixed. At line 290, is that one still 290 or some of my numbering off? 290, 290 through 320. Okay, you blew it. So line 300, yeah, some of these numbers are off from, from my spreadsheet. So line 300 says um, 290 is, okay, you blew it. All right, where did that go? That's at 234, that needs to change. So edit 300, we go over here, we hit C3. 3C. 3C, and that's gonna change to 234 that just moves things over by five spaces there's a specific reason you do it in that order instead of the other order is because okay. if you have to do more than 10 you have to be able to tell how many characters you want to change then hit c for change if you did it the other way you hit change and then uh -huh. it has no idea how many characters you want to change and what's actual data you're trying to type so there's a reason for that the number is always first huh what did i screw up here okay um okay so the next thing we need to change is um, play again. That needs to change from 288 to 384. So let's edit line 360. And it's C3? 3C. 3C. And that's 384. I screwed something up. How do you, how do you stop? Hit A for abort. Okay. Edit 360. And so what is it? C3? A 3C. 3C. And so this becomes, play again becomes 384. What did I screw up here? All right. I think we finished everything. I don't know what, the, I, I'm confused at this point. I know what I meant to do, but I think I've confused myself in the process. One, one quick side note on the edit command. Um, as we mentioned, it's for color basic. It didn't have that. You had to retype the line. Extended basic did have it, and all Coco 3s have it built in. Okay. So if you're running in a Coco 3 emulator or you have a real Coco 3, you can always use the edit command. Yeah, which we are. This is, this is based off of VCC. So I think I've fixed the program. Let's find out.
<laughs> I'll be the first. I'll be the first volunteer to potentially blow his head off. Okay. okay. What is your name, Steve? There's one bullet, six chambers, spinning barrel. What chamber? One. <laughs> bang, you blew it. Steve bit the dust. Bang. Oh, that's the other thing I want to fix. I want to print bang in lowercase. Oh, okay. So, yeah. What line number is that in where it prints the word bang? You blew it. That's I'm probably going to be around right. 280. It's going to be around 280. Okay. Let's edit 280. X to go to the N. So we turn off caps lock and we type in bang with all lowercase. All right. Save. RR11. This is Russian Roulette 1.1. Boom. Brand new version of the software. Let's try, it, let's try it again. What is your name? Steve. Russian Roulette. Oh, I got to fix that. I didn't fix the first line that um, changed the version number. All right. Okay. Edit 20. Go down to the N. 1.1. Save RR11. I'm going to save it again. All right, one more time. Let's try this again. Russian Roulette 1.1. 1 .1. Copyright 2016. Steve Strobridge. Not true. License to Tandy Corporation. Less than true. What is your name, Steve? That's there true. is one bullet. Six chambers. Spinning barrel. What chamber? Uh, oh, it's my turn? No, it's your turn. You're Steve. Oh, uh, yeah. One. Click. You dodged a bullet, Steve. Spinning barrel. What chamber? Two. Too much noise. Okay, spinning barrel, play again. You dodged a bullet, click, you dodged a bullet, play again. I screwed something up somewhere. Where have I screwed I think things it's up? It's kind of worked, but it didn't do the survival. Oh, crap. Okay, number one, there's too much noise. So the noise routine now, because I added that noise, there was a sound 200, comma 4. Hold on, where is that at? The, you dodged a bullet. So that was line 210. So if I list 210. You click the bullet list, 220. We can get rid of that. So I'm just going to get rid of 220 because I added sound in the middle. Yeah. This was, this was that. Well, this too much the, sound. Yeah, too much sound. Now. At first, I thought you were referring to your cat in the background. But yeah, I right. understand now. That's bang. Okay. When you die. Okay. Where, does we, where do we start the happy ending? You blew it, bit the dust. Crap. I don't know. Let's list the whole bloody thing. All right, you survived. So 330. 320 says go to 360. Did. Okay, this is where... this That's the line I needed to get rid of. There was a line I needed to get rid of. Wasn't there? Or 230. Okay, I'm confused as hell. I don't know. <laughs> this is common um, in coding. Yeah, 310. <laughs> 310 says you bit the dust. I don't know. I got to list this whole thing out again. So list 100 through 140. Where the hell are we? That's the one that we bulk deleted. Okay. List 140 through 190. All right. 140 starts our lips. Spinning barrel. What chamber? Okay. List. So that part was working. 191 through 250. All right. All right. So 200 says if you. Click it wrong, then go to 250. Next bullet, next T, go to 320. 240 says go to 320. Okay, what is 320? Well, that's after your so five. Two, 250 is if you get it wrong, right? So line yeah. two in order to go to 50. So 240 says go to 320. So let's list 350 through 250 through 320. Okay, 250. Okay, 300 says you bit the dust. 320 says go to 360. That's uh, retarded. Yeah, because you got 240 going to 320, and then 320 is going to 360. List 320 through 360. So 320. Uh, let's just get rid of 320. That was the superfluous. Oh, no, line. You, need, you still need 320, though, because that's where it's asking you to play again, which you do want to do after you die. Okay. So then instead of that, instead of going to 320, it needs to go to 330. Yes. Okay, what line number was that on then? I forgot. <laughs> two something. <laughs> okay, so 240 yeah. needs to go to 330. That's it. Hopefully somebody's following along at home because I'm losing myself right now. But I believe I've saved this. And I'll go back and I'll fix all of my code. So, what does all of this mean? 
and, I'll, and I'll, I'll wrap this up in the spreadsheet, which might be easier to run. But let's just run through the program and see. What is your name? This time it's you, Curtis. Mm. Curtis, spinning barrel, what chamber? Three. Three. You dodged a bullet, Curtis. Spinning barrel, what chamber? Two. You dodge a bullet, Curtis. Spinning barrel, what chamber? Three again. You dodge a bullet, Curtis. What chamber? Four. You dodged a bullet. What chamber is your last try? Getting nervous. One left. Uh, five. Five. Curtis survived. Yes, we have the game properly. Good. Now. Curtis Help you survived. With the next chapter. <laughs> Would you like to play again? Yes. All right. What is your name? Dork. One. 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 Dork survived. I want to. I want to see it fail now. So play again. Yes. Yeah. Of course, it's just a one in six chance. One. Bang, you blew it. Me bit the dust. Okay, play again. All right, so there's the dark bang, right? Yeah. All right, so if you unfortunately get the bullet, you blew it, you bite the dust, and then ask if you want to play again. Okay, so that is the new and improved Russian roulette. So let I'll me... I'll put a top priority on the game site right away. <laughs> you son of a... You want to allow it for download, or do you want to charge <laughs> it's going to be on donationware. Uh, list 1 through 80. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to switch back over to the code. And I'm going to fix all the code and, and, and annotate what I did. Um, and then make my spreadsheet match the software. And so because I, I because literally I was losing my own mind along the way, and because this is meant to be something that will possibly benefit somebody, <laughs> let's take a moment to, to bring closure to all of this and let's make sure our program is proper now. So line ten. I think the main issue was is that somewhere in the two hundreds the line number got changed. Yeah, yeah. And and my spreadsheet dynamically updates its line numbers. And so when it, so the minute I change something, my spreadsheet dynamically updated those because they're not they weren't manually typed in. And so that formula auto filled and my line numbers changed in the spreadsheet, uh, if that makes any sense. So uh, line 10 still says CLS random eight. Okay, line 20 says print Russian roulette 1.1. Line 30, Steve Strobridge. Line 40, Tandy. Line 60, line, line 40, print Tandy. Line 50 says, what is your name? Line 60, input name. Line 70, clear the screen. Line 80, print, there's one bullet, six chambers. So far, so good. Now I'm going to list 90 through 150. And we actually don't even, we actually don't go anywhere until line to 150 now. So we got rid of all these line numbers here. They're gone. So 150 is the main part of the code now. So now I'm going to list 150 through 200 and see how these line numbers so 150 says for t equals 1 to 5 this is our main code line 160 says b equals random 6 that's going to pick a random bullet and then it says spinning barrel and then it makes a barrel spinning sound which is just an extra that's line 165 for sp for spin equals 1 to 6 sound sp comma 1 next sp so that's your sound as it's spinning the barrel Completely. You see an issue here right now in your spreadsheet. You've got two line 160s. Okay. So I think that maybe so, that's where the issue happened. Okay. So then try number two. That's actually 170. Okay. Yeah, and see how it automatically fixed the line numbers? But I think that's where the confusion happened. Okay. So that's where my confusion got. So 170 then says print try number T what chamber? Line 180 is input answer. 190 is answer is less than 1 or answer is greater than 6. Then go back to 170, which is asking you to try. And then line 200 says if answer equals B, then go to 250. So far, all of that matches my code. So now I'm going to list line 201 through 250. Let's see where I've missed here. Okay, line 210 says print, quote, click. You dodged a bullet. Name strings. Line 230 Okay, line 220 is now gone because we have already sound in here, so I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. Oh, you, you dirty rat. Okay, so let's take all this, copy all that down. This is going away. If I delete that, uh, this sound goes away. Delete. Okay, this is now saying I don't know what you're talking to, but boom, I just fixed that. But now my line numbers are screwed up again. So line 210 said click, you dodged a bullet. 
line 220 is not here. This was actually line 230 that said next T. Line 240 says go to 330. That was a bug fix. That was a bug fix. Okay. Line 250 says sound 10 comma 4. So far this is all correct. Now I need to list line 251 through line 300 and let's see where I screwed up here. Okay. So now line 260 clears the screen in blood red. Line 270 says for S equals 1 to 25. This is doing it 25 times. It's going to print the word bang on the screen. What I did here was put bang in reverse case just so it looks cooler, right? Yep. Next S, line 920 and then line 300 says print at 234 comma you blew it semicolon. Okay, this should also, line 310, should be a semicolon here too so it doesn't destroy the screen. All right, so, but I haven't gotten that far in my code. So now I'm gonna list line 301 through 350-ish. Okay, so line, line 300 says you blew it. I got that. Line 310 says print at 260 comma end string bit the dust that has a semicolon there. You blew it should also be semicolon. So let's let's edit that. Um, on my code, it actually does. I didn't do it in the spreadsheet. Okay, and then you you bit the dust. Line 320 says go to 360. Line 340. Uh, okay. Line 320 says go to 360. Line 330 says CLS random eight. Line 340 says sound 200 comma four. Line 350 says you have survived. So this is the happy ending part here. Line 330 is the happy ending, right? So at 240, if you go through all five tries, it's going to jump down to 330, which is the happy ending here. This is a high pitch sound. We print your name, we say you've survived, and then we go down to would you like to play again? And that's kind of the end of the game. So um, sounds a little crazy. We've actually optimized our code now. We're down to 34 lines. We started off as uh, 41 lines. We're actually down to 34 lines. So just to recap again, line 10 is going to clear the screen. Line, line 20, 30, 40, uh, print the, the, the you know introduction. You just watch and roulette. Then it asks you for your name, input your name, clears the screen, sets up the game. There's one bullet. There's six chambers. Gives you five tries. Picks a random bullet inside that loop now. So each time you take a try, you've got a completely fair chance at winning. Um, and I put in a little routine here to make the sound of the barrel spinning, the drrr sound. Um, then it says, here's your try. This is try one. What chamber? Input your answer. Make sure your answer is valid. If your answer is the same number as the bullet, go to line 250, which is the um, you lose sequence. And then um, if not, we continue the cycle by saying you dodged a bullet next try all the way through five if you've gone through all five tries we then jump down to 330 meaning you are the winner that's the happy ending if you don't then at this point here it says if you if your answer equals a bullet then jump down to 250 which is right here which makes a low frequency sound clears the screen in red puts the word bang on the screen 25 times and then prints you blew it your name bit the dust and then it goes to line 360 that basically prints on the screen, would you like to play again, yes or no? If you say yes, go back to line 10. If you say no, end the game. And then line 400 will go right back to 350. That, that says you survived. Huh? That should be 360 then. 360. That needs to be fixed now, right? That, well, let me finish listing out my code here. Good point. Where's my mouse? List line 350 through 400. And then, yeah, line 400 actually should say go to line 360. You are correct, sir. Line 360, which is That's the That's why you paid me that, the big buck. That's right. Play again. Zeros, so this, the, zeros of dollars. Yes. This print this loops that back to that. Okay. So those are the changes to Russian Roulette. That's the changes to the code. Here's what the game looks like one final time. We'll play it one more time for your entertainment. For your amusement value. You know what, Steve? Try. They're all hoping we're going to die. <laughs> so, Curtis. <laughs> okay, they're all what? hoping I'm going to die. <laughs> what chamber, Curtis? Four. Four. You dodged a bullet, Curtis. What chamber? I'm going to try cheat ten. Ten. What ah, chamber? it's making me do it again. <laughs> okay, six. Six. 
You dodged a bullet. What chamber? Three. Three. Bang! Oh. You blew it, Curtis. Everybody got their wish. The I died. <laughs> I have to try now, dude. What is your name? What chamber? One. What chamber? Two. Three. Four. Five. Steve survived. I don't want to survive. Okay. What is your name? Steve. What chamber? Two. Oh, first oh, try. I did it on the first try. I am awesome. <laughs> so that's Russian Roulette 1.1. Having fun with making... We should have called it Death Wish. <laughs> death Wish. <laughs> Having fun with silly games in basic. What better way to spend an evening? And to be um, honest, in games, I think one of the most crucial commands to use that you'll, you'll find in almost any game is the R&D command. Because if you don't have some randomness... Right. There are certain games you can have that are completely strategy based or completely follow rules, but yeah. even in those cases, you usually need some sort of randomization to initialize to start. Yeah, the yeah. I never got as fancy as learning artificial intelligence or writing algorithms or anything like that. So all my games were based on randomizations. You know, there's very little logic. Just move the bad guy some random the direction. The good and... ones are usually a combination because you need some random initial things to start with. Otherwise, right. it's like a game of like a, the old escape game used to be in the late seventies. It used to be like. You do a move and then all these things follow you. They just figure out, are you to the left and down? Well, then move left and down one square. Yeah. That's not random. But where you right. put the initial monsters chasing you, that was random. So you still needed yeah. some randomness in there. A little bit of randomness. It's very rare you get a game that has no randomness at all. Okay. But yeah, this was fun. This was a fun exercise into my own small-scale version of insanity in coding. Um, but it was fun. I just, you know, I had the bug and so I'm glad we did this. I'm glad that now I feel like I have gotten this off of my mental chest here <laughs> where it was bothering me. There was a splinter in my mind this whole time knowing that something needed to be changed. And I'm glad I got a chance to change it. So, and you proved to everybody that you do have OCD. <laughs> oh, Congratulations. We haven't, we haven't even <laughs> begun. We have not even begun. So, all right, Curtis, thank you for joining me. This was another little bonus episode of Programming in Basic. And we actually created... Two games. We play, We got Guess What I'm Thinking and Russian Roulette 1.1, where you now have a more fighting chance of not blowing your brains out, which is always good. You know? Cool. Well, thank you for watching. Keep on coding. Long live the cocoa and all that other good stuff. Peace Bye, out, everyone. everybody. <laughs>